What was the worst, most damaging, way you took revenge? I was a chef for a famous all-inclusive hotel chain. One day I was approached in the kitchen and told I needed to pack my bags and move 3000 miles away to fix a labor issue at another hotel. I happily obliged, but negotiated a deal where I would have my choice of any hotel location after I successfully fixed the labor issue. I arrived at the new hotel and proceeded to diligently address the labor problem, while also taking over dinner service for 750 people. After a few months the labor issue had been fixed and settled, and the kitchen was running as smoothly as I like. I asked my manager about when I could make the move to another hotel per hour arrangement, and I was told since I had done such a good job they were going to make me stay where I was for an indeterminate amount of time, i.e. forever. I let my management know this was unacceptable, and I demanded I be transferred in accordance with the original agreement that got me on a plan in the first place. I was told they would work on it. I gave them a 3 week window to address the issue, to give them time to discuss it with the head office etc. I told them if they did not come through in 3 weeks I would walk off the job and never look back. After 3 quiet weeks I politely asked my manager if my transfer had come through or at least was still in the works. It was not. The next morning I gave the entire dinner staff the day off and told them not to answer any work calls. I set up the kitchen as if I were prepping dinner, onions and herbs in hotel pans full of water with foil covers, garlic sizzling in pans, etc. I kept the charade up until around 4.30pm at which time I left the kitchen, went to my room, picked up my bags and went to the lobby to wait for my ride. The manager came out freaked, there were 750 prepaid dinner reservations that night and no food, and told me if I walked out I would never work for the company again. I laughed shook his hand and said goodbye. I never looked back and never talked to anyone there ever again. This was 20 plus years ago. I've posted this story before but it's relevant. I got to dispense a little justice to my neighbor once. I met the neighbor sitting outside shining boots. He was in the army national guard. I walked over to introduce myself and we talked a bit about the army. I helped him shine his boots and pulled a couple of beers out of the cooler that I kept in the back of my truck. Fast forward a few months, and I'm silently wondering if I'm an alcoholic. The case of beer that I bought day before yesterday had dwindled to a six pack. I shrugged it off. I drove my wife's car to work one day that week. My wife worked in a shop across the street and phoned me to tell me that she's been watching the neighbor climb into my truck and stuff his pants with my beer. At first, I was going to confront him and demand restitution but I decided that I could avenge my missing cans of beer by switching to bottles. So I switched, and when they were empty I refilled them with, I recycled beer and recapped. He put them in my cooler and waited patiently. A few went missing. I waited, nothing else was taken. My point was made. Alright, Lloyd Christmas. A neighbor who I never met accused me of trying to stab her dog through a double fence this winter. They have a wooden 6 foot stockade fence surrounded by a 4 foot chain link fence. The dog was injured on something in their backyard and required several stitches which resulted in a large vet bill that they couldn't afford. They concocted the story that their animal hating neighbor did this and began a fundraiser and raised quite a sum of money. Way more than the bill was. I had no idea about this whole drama until a friend in the police department told me of what this wacko was accusing me of. So once I found out, I requested a copy of the police report where the neighbor stated that the dog was hurt in their yard. There wasn't any blood or human footprints near the fence etc etc, and I posted it to the fundraising site. She lost friends and reputation for $400. Not exactly the worst revenge but I think it's funny. My ex mother in law was one of those a wife serves her husband and does everything kind of people. She always criticized me, my housework, the meals I cooked etc. I decided to get even by filling a sock with the dust from my vacuum canister. Every day it stopped by her house and take a moment to shake the sock around her house. It left dust everywhere. The floors were the easiest, everyone's socks would get dirty from walking around. Her husband was noticing she wasn't doing her duty. The best was when I went and shook dust all over her couch pillows and returned that night. I made a show of flopping down on the couch from being so exhausted from work. Dust went everywhere. Her husband was like what the heck. Don't you ever vacuum? Double quote. This is brilliant. 
I imagine you shaking and swinging your sock full of dust like a priest with a branch sprinkling holy water. Bless this carpet with vengeance. This is my dad's story from when he was a kid. He was walking down the road one day when a bunch of kids in their late teens pulled up in a car and sprayed him with a fire extinguisher. He blew it off as a joke and thought it was pretty funny. Five minutes later the same kids circle around and spray him a second time. This time my dad took note of the license plate number make and model of the car, and proceeded to track it down and find out where the kid lived. That night he went to the kid's house and threw a fire extinguisher through the car's windshield. Justice was served. When I was 11 there was a guy in the year above me that used to be a bully he would stand over everyone and he was massive for a 12 year old one day after doing pay, physical education class. I went to get changed into uniform in the changing room that was backed onto his classroom. Just my luck this douche happens to be in there what are the odds anyway a few words are exchanged before he shoves me really hard into all these school bags that were stored in there and leaves. When I dusted myself off something caught my eye. It was his bag his mum had written his name in big bold letters so I thought frick him and had a look and to my great joy discovered the sickest Dragon Ball Z card collection he was a rich kid as well as a bully and had them at school to show. Off so yeah I stole them and never looked back. After school I seen him crying like a bee telling his mum that they are missing. You should have scattered the cards across the world and once he recollected them you'd grant him a wish. I screen capped photos from my wife's lover's Facebook and sent them to the school administration because he was a teacher and posting pics of your students test then making fun of them is not cool at all. He was fired at the end of the year. That's genius. I love it when revenge is also pure justice. Sorry about the rest though sad. Was at a huge music festival in Wales, long story short. Some muscle douchebag rave a buttholes stole all our booze out of our tent and drank the stuff in plain sight while laughing at us all. We confronted them. They denied it. They were much bigger than us and were surrounded by their friends. So next day, they all leave to go to the main venue tents and my mate runs, dives into their tent and disappears for a good 10 minutes. I'm wondering what the heck he's doing so I walk over and open up the tent. Only to find him squatting over a hole he'd dug in the ground in the middle of their tent. And he's taking the biggest crap I've ever seen. Just non. Challantly pooping in this hole. He finishes up. Drags the canvas flooring back over this hole. We take a quick look for any booze we can have. But none that we could find. And we walk back to our tent. For the rest of the festival. We can hear these sea shouting about the ripe smell of crap everywhere. Until one of the lad's girlfriend decided to drag the canvas bottom out of the tent and finds the hidden treasure trove of crap. But suffice to say they had pee off more people than just us so when they confronted us. All we could do was deny it completely and laugh. Surprised we didn't get beaten up simply for taking the pee out of the situation like we did. It was a good festival. Chase and status weren't bad. Found more booze. Used the porta potties from then on. Beach break 2012. I was there. Not one of the buttholes in question. When I was around 12 and my brother was like 13 or 14 we had a race to get to the shower. He only wanted to take one because I said I was going to take one. Naturally he beat me there. To take revenge I flushed the downstairs toilet. I don't know if anyone lived in that old offer house before. But our house was close to 100 years old. That mess with the water temperature. It was shooting out fiery hot boiling lava water. I kept flushing it. I flushed it every single time I could. He called me upstairs about 45 minutes later. He said the water was too hot and that he couldn't figure out what to do. He had shampoo in his eyes and he couldn't rinse it off. We turned off the shower and I took him outside to our backyard. I sprayed him down with the hose. The whole time him telling me what a good sister I was and how much he appreciated this. People we knew walked by our street they thought it was hilarious. I wasn't going to tell him. I was going to save it and do it every single time he got to the shower. But my mom caught me the next time I did it and she told everyone. It's my one story. The only time I gave as good as I got. A woman rear-ended me pretty bad. Told me not to call the cops because she was on the way to a AA meeting and she would lose her license. She called her boyfriend. 
who was a lawyer and he told me to let her go, told me to come to his office and he would pay cash for all repairs if I brought in an estimate. Did as requested, lawyer laughed at me and said there was no proof and I wouldn't get a cent. I was completely broke and knew I could not afford the repairs and furthermore the car was not legally drivable as it was. Late on another night I went to the AA, meeting via bicycle. She had said where it was in passing and I checked the schedule. I confronted her on her way out. She confessed her license was suspended and she had been driving without a license that day. Since it was summer I had days free from class and rode my bicycle to the lawyer's office for a few days to learn his schedule from across the street. Slowly a plan for revenge took shape in my mind. When I knew his beautiful car would be unattended for a while I filled his gas tank with sand and sugar loads of IT. At the time I lived in a bad neighborhood and there were always abandoned cars around. I had taken the rear plate off on one with expired tag and put that on his car. Next I slashed all four tires with a small slit so the air would slowly be gone by the time he was leaving. But now I was only able to see the first part of my plan from my perch. He came out from his office, saw the car sitting low to the ground and started screaming like a banshee. And this is how I imagined the rest. He pays to get the car towed. They replace patch the tires he drives off. Engine fails eventually because of the sand etc. Tows it again, pays for repairs, or new rebuilt engine, drives off and is pulled over for expired plates. Since he arrogantly never took my information and never even looked at the repair estimate he didn't know the name of his saboteur. I actually didn't tell anyone about this when it was going on. My girlfriend would not have approved, and very few since. But about a year later I drove by the office and saw it was no longer his. I feel like the woman probably would have done the right thing but she was just mixed up with a jerk. Hopefully the events I started made it clear to her. Sweet secret revenge. I had this really bitchy neighbor a few years ago. She and her boyfriend always did random crap to me and my stuff. Once she drew on my car with sharpie. It was a penis. Stole my garbage bins and hid them in her backyard. I've called the police on her many times, but she's got connections there so she was always let off. Then she killed my cat. He was an outdoors cat, and while he was chilling, she fed him rat poison. How do I know? She told me so. Apparently he was agitating her dogs so she killed him. Her dogs were fancy but, top notch, 10k a piece dogs. They were all show dogs and freaking adorable. So I took all three of them, and gave them to various friends family members. One is in Canada, one in the UK, and another in Japan. I didn't think I'd get away with it, but she didn't have any of those tracking microchips in her dogs so I literally just took off the collar and they were mine. I moved shortly after that, but apparently she's still looking for them. TL. DR. Bitchy neighbor killed my cat, so I stole her dogs and scattered them across the world. Dang man that's awesome. You didn't have to stoop to her level. No animal was harmed. And your pals got some dope pets. I used to have a feral cat living behind my apartment building. It would always pee and crap on my car. It hated people and didn't want to be touched. Always running if you got to within 10 feet. Anyways. I got revenge on that bee one day when I trapped her. Took her to the vet. Got her a checkup and paid for some minor surgery. Then I got her adopted. Last I heard she lived with a toddler that picked her up and carried her everywhere. Frick that cat. She got what she deserved. Yeah good life will teach that son of a bee. Grrrrr face. A buddy of mine insulted me. So I got him drunk. Took him down to the family catacombs. Chained him to a wall inside an alcove. And bricked up the front of the alcove. No regrets. Someone call the police. So everyone has heard of the classic x lax and the brownies trick right? Well my buddy pulled that weak sauce on me about a week ago so I pulled this little ditty on him to show him just how much more worse it can get. So there is this awesome weight loss drug called Ali, which works by turning off the enzymes that digest ingested fats so instead of being absorbed through the gut they are instead passed right through the GI tract. Well I took said buddy out to a truce dinner at the local Asian buffet, pretty much fat covered fat in fat, and slipped him a desmid meal. The amount of raw sludge that has dripped, sloshed, and exploded out of that undeserving deserving butthole is more revenge than I could ever hope for. Never trust the truce dinner. 
When I was first out on my own I went to live temporarily with some friends while I settled in and got my own place. I put most of my belongings in the storage unit of their apartment. I went back a week or so after moving into my own place to get my things and my buddy told me that the guys he knows downstairs from him had taken my bed set. I went down to confront them about it and when they opened the door I could see straight into their apartment and into the bedroom, and there was my bed. They denied it and said their uncle gave it to them and shut the door in my face. I asked my buddy if he knew which car they owned and he did. He pointed it out. I checked the doors. They were unlocked. I went into my car and grabbed the extra bottles of motor oil I had, and proceeded to coat the interior of their car in motor oil. The last bottle covered the driver's seat. Then I walked next door to the 7-Eleven, bought a carton of milk, and poured it into the vents of the car. Went paintballing. One dickhead thought it would be hilarious to shoot me in the back of the leg to see if it worked. Obviously it hurt like freaking crazy. Anyways, two rounds in and we get put on the same team. He's forgotten about it because he's done about 30 other dickhead things since then. He walks about 10 feet in front of me as we begin the round and says is everyone ready? So, I shot him in the back of the leg and said yeah just gotta see if my gun is working. He turns around screaming at me so, ever so calmly I shoot him again. Judging by his reactions, I shot his left ball, walked away, he went home, victory. First job in retail, and I was really close with the rest of the team. Some newcomers were hired for the summer, which gave us some healthy competition. We were on commission. One girl kept stealing everyone else's sales and when she was confronted she gave absolute no fricks, and continued taking everyone's sales. Our schedule was always done on paper, and it is everyone's job to read their schedules properly for the following week. In the case you can't physically come into the store to write your schedule, you had to call and speak to a manager to read out your schedule over the phone. Anyways. She ends up calling and didn't ask for a manager to give her her schedule. I gave her all the wrong shifts, which followed by termination due to job abandonment, missing work 3 shifts in a row. I worked in an office once, and the boss was a real prick. If you used any of your sick days, he would hold that against you at your yearly review, but if he was sick at all, or even just felt like it, he would stay home or go golfing. Well, there was a terrible flu going around. I was sick, a co-worker was sick and throwing up in his trash bin, but none of us were allowed to leave, so when my boss went home super early again, I went into his office and coughed and sneezed all over his mouse and keyboard, he got really sick a day later. In 6th grade, some kid made a snide remark in class about my name, and the whole class laughed. I saw him in the hallway carrying books the next day, so I kicked the back of his knee. The sound of teeth on linoleum still fills the spaces between my thoughts. When my grandparents were younger they lived in flats and the woman in the flat below them nearest to the post box would always read their letters. My granddad knew because he could tell that she was ray sealing the glue over her kettle. So one day he decided to send a letter to himself but include a black hair of my nan's. The woman having the same colored hair would pick it out thinking it was hers. However, with this he also included a note saying stop reading our letters you know ZCNT. My granddad's a rather blunt guy. Needless to say their post was never opened again and he never received that letter back. I changed a battery for a guy I can't stand. So I didn't connect the auxiliary pack before I removed the battery from his car. So his clock and radio stations all got reset. I was playing follow the leader with my best friend in kindergarten. He was the leader and ran up the slide. We weren't supposed to run up the slide. But we were 5 years old and could make our own decisions. I followed him. But the teacher saw me and told me to sit down on the pavement until recess was over. So I told her that my friend went up it first and I just followed. The teacher called him over and asked if what I said was true. To which he said number so then I told him we weren't friends until he said sorry. That showed him. He said sorry and then we played Tony Hawk on his N64 after school. Well that was adorable. My little brother was a C. My parents got him a cat for his birthday. I could never have even dreamt of such a thing for myself. I made the cat love me more than it loved him. Do not frick with me. In Catholic grade school, we took notes for one hour every day in theology class. 
then were given an exam that covered the entire year. I deliberately waited until mid-May, then acted out in class so that I'd have a lunch detention. That basically means they leave you unattended in your classroom, doing some bulls assignment while everyone else is out at recess. During lunch detention, I stole the theology notebook from a kid's desk, I hated him, and threw it in the sewer on my way home. He had to borrow someone else's notebook and rewrite the entire year's worth of notes by hand. It took him over a week, working 3-4 to four hours per day. Not worse but funniest, I dated a guy for 3 years and broke up with him when I found out he was married, whole other story. I basically did nothing when I found out other than stop speaking to him. About 6 months later I was thinking about it and wanted to send a little jab so I logged into the student library site with his student card info and ordered a few dozen books on adultery to be delivered to his office. Option available to grad students, which he shares with two colleagues. He's a computer science major so the books were definitely not part of his studies. It was little but gave me a laugh. Not me, but my brother has always been one of those evil geniuses thinking 10 steps ahead of everyone else. In kindergarten he went to a fancy private school and used to get picked on a lot for wearing glasses. The one time he actually fought back in self defense, he got sent to the principal's office and lost recess privileges for a week. This was in January. He held on to that resentment all year. Fast forward to the last day of school. My brother consumes as many liquids as he possibly can, and then doesn't use the bathroom all day. In the last hour of the day, he sneaks into the principal's office and pees everywhere. We're talking all four walls, floor, and ceiling. Eventually, my brother gets caught. When the principal asked why he did it, he looks him straight in the eyes and says you pee me off. So I pee on you. And that's how you get expelled from private school. Wow he must be insanely smart to pull that off in kindergarten. Amazing. I was sitting in the library on the first day of fall semester trying to work and a kid wearing Beats headphones was loudly rapping to his music. I politely asked him to stop, to which he called me a bee or something, tried to make a scene, and got up and left. The thing was he had forgotten to log off of his school's account, so I dropped him from all his classes. Well, at least he can tell everybody he's the man. He's the man. He is the man. He Went on a bachelor weekend trip for a friend of mine with a bunch of guys from the wedding party. It wasn't anything crazy with strippers or W. But we did do some bar hopping. It was a Friday night and I had gotten up for work around 4am that morning and was pretty beat by about 1am. So I left the bar and went home a little earlier than everyone else. We had filled the bathtub with ice and beers and drank about half of what we purchased before heading to the bar. The reason I bring that up, I woke up completely covered in baby powder. It is completely caked in my eyes, nose, hair, ears and mouth. My nose is dried out and so is my mouth. We were all supposed to head out on a fishing trip that morning at around 6am. So, without batting an eye, mostly because I couldn't freaking open them, I head right for the shower which is full of beer, water and cardboard cases. I quickly take a cold shower and get all the crap off and head to the boat. Only 4 out of the 8 made it on the trip. Everyone is shocked with how well I am taking having been seriously antiqued. But, I simply ask a few questions and get the answers I need to hear and go about my day as if nothing happened. Turns out it was an old roommate of mine that did it to me. He was too fricked up to make it on the boat trip and is sleeping it off in the hotel room. So, the moment you've all been waiting for, the revenge. While we were heading into the dock after a day of fishing, I filled a water bottle full of all the bait juice and little pieces of squid and raw bait fish. I filled that crap to the brim. I was very quiet about it and didn't let anyone know what I was up to. We all made it back to the hotel and I acted like I was heading back to my room. Instead, I went over to this guy's car and proceeded to pour half the bottle down the AC vent underneath the windshield. But I wasn't done there. I went over to his room and knocked on the door. He opened it up and I calmly squirted half of what was left in his face. While he was squirming around and screaming. What did you spray on me? I sprayed his bag of clothes and then him one more time for good measure. Then I walked out of the door. So, the best part? He cleaned everything up and got over it. But he had no idea that his car had been filled with this juice and it was literally cooking in his AC vent for the next 2 days. When we went to drive home, a 2, 1 stroke 2 hour drive back, 
he kept complaining to everyone that, the smell just won't go away. For two and a half hours in 90 degree weather he blasted his AC with fish juice directly into his face. He ended up selling the car a month later because, he just couldn't get the smell out. TL. Doctor don't frick with a garbage man. Man that's rough. That's like crapping in someone's open mouth as they sleep because they drew a mana brow on you with magic marker while you were asleep. I've always thought that if someone really pee me off I'd coat the top of their ceiling fan with glitter. Reddit. What's your most devious plan for revenge? I once saw in another thread about a guy who put up sign S around town that said will give $300 to whoever has the best Chewbacca impression and left his friend's phone number. I'm pulling this on my roommate tomorrow. Seriously. Put their phone number in a fake pizza ad, and post flyers all over a college campus. Say something like 2XL pizzas for $10 and 24 hours delivery service give them 2 weeks before they have to change their number. This is gold. It can be done with other numbers too. Just imagine an entire campus of flyers for the different services with the same number. Spray regular dish soap in the dishwasher. It dries so they can't see it and will make the dishwasher fill and overflow with foam. No permanent damage. A little cleanup, but gives the person a WTF moment. Did this to myself inadvertently once. Upside was my kitchen floor was spotless once I had mopped up that mess. For enemies with pools. Every night go to his her house and drop a balled up candy bar in the shape of a pleasant poo in the bottom of the pool. They will at first approach it with precaution, but upon learning the game will begin to simply pick the suspicious candy out by hand. After a while, crap in the pool. 60% of the time, it works every time. I had a neighbor who was always acting like he owned the block. One day after he decided to call the cops on my friends for skating in my driveway, I decided that enough was enough. That night, I covered his entire lawn in powdered milk. The next morning, I came out to see him trying to uprake the cottage cheese he'd just made. It's been my go-to retaliation ever since. My enemy will have cottage cheese front steps. Thank you kindly. This is the longest lasting prank that I know of, no matter how many times you sweep, vacuum. Mop, Roomba, or Tribal Dance this crap will never be gone. My cousin did this to me two freaking years ago and I'm still cleaning up glitter. At a past place of employment, a young girl in a very fancy dress, with lots of yellow orange glitter in and on it, came in. She didn't do much. No jumping, running, playing, etc. She was just there in the dress. Months later, we could still see yellow glitter on the tile floor. It always made me giggle. A friend of mine, a science major of some sort at Boston College, took his revenge by stealing a supply of roach pheromones from the lab and spraying it around the apartment of his nemesis. Apparently, every male roach in a 50 mile radius showed up for the party. That is freaking terrible. I might seriously freaking murder that person. One of my flatmates has been pretty bad lately. She's fairly superstitious. So I've bought an old fogey. I'm going to put it in the roof space above her room and wire it so when the lights are turned off. 10 minutes later the furby turns on. Sweet dreams B. You should get another furby and place them in front of each other so they talk. I once got back at my neighbor for teeping my place. He doesn't lock his house. So for 2 years I pooped in his toilet and never flushed. When I finally confessed he was so relieved. Thought he had been sleep pooping and was seriously considering seeing a doctor. His response, I always flushy waited 2 years for me to retaliate, not realizing that I was retaliating the whole time. This guy's thinking long term with a splash of psychological damage. I like it. Sponges. Get several sponges L. The fluffier the better. When I say several I mean, stock up on those B. Get the sponges wet and use some string to tie them up into small sponge balls. When they dry you should be able to take the string off and they stay in that position. When leaving for the last time, flush those be down the toilet. Sweet sweet revenge. Good for office buildings too. You are way too dangerous to be let outside. Back in boarding school, a lot of men and women went to boarding schools in our country. It was like a live in high school. I had a roommate that thought it was hilarious to flip my dresser upside down. 
so when I wake up in the morning and pull out one of the drawers to get dressed my clothes would fall on the ground. Not the funniest thing ever, but it was enough to get a laugh out of me. Either way, the kid wore out the novelty of the joke. This started getting old. It was annoying. What I did to combat it was clever. Since this is Soviet era furniture, and the designers had no imagination, it was a metal rectangle shaped dresser with wheels on the bottom. The only way to tell if it was upside down was if the wheel end was up. I took the wheels off the bottom and screwed them in on the top. When my roommate came back he immediately noticed his dresser with the wheel side up. He said him too clever to fall for this, by name. So he flipped it over. The next morning as we're getting dressed for our first class, he pulls open a drawer and all of his clothes fall on the floor. TLDR. Practical joke. The carpet cherry bomb. Had a friend that dealt with an evil landlord. There were many situations that warranted retaliation but they were powerless until it was time to move out. They sprinkled cherry kool-aid on the light tan carpets. It starts almost white in color and is a non-visible powder on the floor. They move out. The landlord goes to shampoo the carpets. Once the water hits the floor it stains bright kool-aid red as the cleaner sweeps across the floor. Pure evil retaliation that should only be used in extreme cases. The carpet cherry bomb. Sign them up for every mailing list and catalog, the pornier the better, you can find. They'll be getting calls from every double glazing firm and dodgy financial advisor within a 20 mile limit. Related story, in high school, some girls who were in our youth group really ticked us off. They would constantly try to prank us by saying stupid stuff and window paint on our cars. So a group of us guys got really fed up one time. They made it so we could almost not even see out of our windows, and we knew we hadn't had enough. We went to the store, bought duct tape, 4 cans of X, and as much glitter as we could carry. Seriously, this was a ton of glitter. We drove by their house, sisters, and as expected, they left their door unlocked. Success. Step 1 was glittering the seats. Done. Glitter was everywhere. Step 2. Glitter in the air vents. Done. Glitter would continue to be everywhere. Step 3. Duct tape the axe cans on full blast. Throw them into the car like live grenades. And get out of there. Oh. And we wrote one word on the car in window paint. Stop. My friend egged and peanut buttered my car. Long story. Anyway. To get back at him. I found out that his car was parked at a bowling alley. My bud and I went over to exact revenge. First we had packing peanuts which we filled his car up with to about stomach level if you were sitting down. We also took mustard and spread it all over his ventilation intake. We were going to leave his gas tank open and spill some sugar on the ground to make it look like we poured it in his tank, but I think we decided against it. We put fluff under his door handles. By far the best part though was that we took a bunch of flour and dumped it into his defrost vents. The ones that are right at the bottom of the windshield, and then used the manual controls. It was a Jeep Cherokee, and turned on the defrost setting with the maximum fan speed. We decided we had to witness his reaction, and there happened to be a higher level parking lot with a ledge overlooking. We stood and waited for the victims to exit the bowling alley. Once he got to his car, the amount of cussing while he felt the fluff and noticed all the packing peanuts was hilarious enough. Then after he shoveled enough of them out to sit in the driver's seat, he jumped into the car and turned the ignition only to be greeted by a cloud of flour. He went back inside and punched my informant in the face. Fun times. I hope you made up for the informant poor guy. Get a whole bunch of those tiny little styrofoam packing balls, the real tiny ones. You gain access to the victim's car, funnel as many as you can into all of the air convents. Set everything to max so when he turns the car on, instant snow globe. I may have to do this one. High bits of raw shrimp throughout their house apartment room car. Shrimp will start to rot in a couple days, and few things smell worse than rotten shrimp. If you make the pieces small, and hide them well, they might never actually find them all. Then it'll only stop smelling once the shrimp has decomposed completely, which can take a while. I saw a story on here, and I might be remembering it wrong, about someone who stashed a frozen fish under the car seat of one of his friends. Turns out the friend was on vacation or something in the summer so he didn't find it until he got back and by then the car was saturated in soggy rotting fish smell. 
get into their room late at night, place a dozen lawn gnomes around their room all staring directly at them and then place a speaker by their head, play a pre-recorded mp3 of soft whispers, tape their reaction and put it on facebook, extra points for coating the lawn gnomes in blood. My old co-worker used to tape the bottom of my mouth a lot and crack himself up laughing. So one day, I fill the cap of his hand sanitizer with black ink. Just minutes after he returns from lunch I hear him screaming with laughter as he runs past my workstation with black ink to his elbows. That made work so great for the next month. I once had a college roommate that wouldn't stop eating my food. I asked him countless times, he continued. The last straw was him eating all the thanksgiving leftovers I brought back from home. To get back at him I mixed a ton of laxatives into all these beverages I bought and this cake I baked. It took him about a week and several doctor's visits to figure out what was happening. My cousin did that to buttholes who kept stealing his lunch at school. He ended up getting suspended for poisoning his own food. Worth it. I had my sandwiches stolen all high school long. It wasn't a bully thing. I was big and athletic, it was friends of mine being douches because their moms couldn't make sandwiches worth a jank. I ignored it for 4 years. At first I told myself it was minor, one bite here or there, who cares, it'll tear around the edges and say frick you father, but after a while it got annoying, and when I started lifting and wanting to count my calories it became downright rumpus worthy, but I said no, RT, no, your time will come. Flash forward, New Orleans, May 2005, pre-Katrina, I'm there for my godbrother's graduation at Tulane. We have days to wander the quarters. Bombing around on the trolley I happen upon the French market, an outdoors Nolan spice fest. Eventually I happen upon the hot sauce store. Know the store that sells sauce, some hot. The hot sauce store, bottles are arranged in descending order from biggest to smallest, and cheapest to priciest, you know which corner I am going for already, I find it at the far end of the rack, $12 for a wicked looking the size of a hotel shampoo, I buy it, I wait, last day of school, last class, everyone chilling, nobody paying good old RT any attention, I bring out the goods, an Italian hoagie with lettuce and tomato, fresh from home, I slather it with the sauce, place the hoagie in a ziplock, in a plastic Publix bag, and noisily leave it on my desk as I leave for the bathroom, adrenaline rush, I know who's in there, my friend from 9th grade, the only other white kid on our basketball team, will surely wringle at this, he is far and away the Dow Chiefs douche in school, how we stayed friends so long is nothing less than kooky bro quantum entanglement, I hate him. 10 sweaty minutes pass and I decide to re-enter. Result, I am greeted by 7 teary-eyed, coughing, spitting, cursing, red-faced red-handed M, girls included, who are alternating between hacking up and giving me the finger. They bull rush past me for the water fountains. The class is senior high school, psychology honors. The teacher is from Louisiana and doesn't even particularly like me. He is dying lodging. I walk out the door. Having reached absolute zero Kelvin of fricks given. TL. DR. Epic blister tong. Zero Kelvin of fricks given. New catchphrase. I signed my friend up for a bunch of gay dating sites a few years back. The profile cub looking for a bear got a lot of responses. He is also still a member of a gay and lesbian film society. He can't figure out why he keeps getting this stuff. I keep renewing the memberships. Six years and counting. Someone I know filled his friend's living room with blown up balloons. When his friend burst them all in anger, the glitter he put in them went everywhere. Would love to have seen his face. I am just so angry that my room is filled with colorful balloons. Not just a plan. I did this. Buy some 7-Eleven style crappy pee magazines. Also buy some cigarettes and a black grease pencil. And the pee mags must be crappy. Horrible stuff. Not penthouse. Not Hustler, but the weird crap that they sell discount to 3 for $10 in shrink wrap, possibly from the UK, on the front of each magazine, right thinking of you in grease pencil, meticulously go through every single page and, using the cigarettes, burn out the eyes, mouths, and cooters of every woman in the magazine, every single one, even the ones in the crappy ads for 900 numbers, 
This will take you about 15 cigarettes for a 36 page magazine. Right misspelled pejoratives on random pages. S. Whore. Fuck you. Etc. Mail one of them to your target. No return address. A month later. Mail them another. Rinse. Repeat. Until they decide to move. I have done this to two very bad neighbors. The longest one lasted 4 months. And broke his apartment lease to GTFO. Uh, what a flying frick. I will hide an alarm under their floorboards, set for 5am, to go off for 10 minutes every morning. The sound will be of screaming, and snarling dogs, covered in radio static. They will be confused and annoyed, but too tired to find the alarm, and it will just keep happening, every morning. Or the sound of a beating heart. Dude I know, parked in my only visitor parking spot in a small apartment. But he didn't ask and just used it to park while he went to a bar with a girl. Anyways we were having people over and it made it a hassle to get parking. So me and my roommate take a condom put a little bit of cornstarch and mixed in a few drops of milk to give it a good thick white consistency. We slapped that condom on his windshield and it kind of leaked down his windshield. Mind you the parking space is in the dark back alley downtown. Our apartment window looked right down onto the parking spot we waited until later that night when he came back. He got in the car, then immediately jumped out with a disgusted look on his face grabbed a branch from a bush and flicked the condom away. Got in the car with his girl and drove off. Two weeks later I bumped into him and told him I saw his car at my place a few weekends ago. He said your I parked there and I came back and some sick homeless left a used condom on my windshield. I had to find a 24 hour car wash at 3am I just laughed. I kinda want to buy cornstarch now. It wasn't me, but a friend had some trouble with a fired co-worker sending him email daily complaining that she got fired. He was second in command at the office. He signed up her email to every website he could find including some P and other questionable marketing sites. The emails magically stopped in about a day. A local Mexican place I like is this ridiculously spicy habanero pepper sauce. I'd like to see what would happen if I mixed some of that into the laundry detergent of someone I really, really didn't like. Either nothing or some epic burning bunghole. The soap would break up the capsicum oil. Better to do it in air conditioner. Had a friend that did this in college. It's called the Todd. Todd stands for trash can of death. 1. Acquire a city trash bin. Like. The huge plastic green ones with wheels. 2. Keep in your backyard the hotter outside and more directly in sunlight the better. 3. Anything nasty you have anything at all put it in the Todd. Go to crap crap in the Todd. Go to pee pee in the Todd. Sour milk. Todd. CM. Todd. Rotten eggs. Todd that crap. 4. Once the Todd is about half full. Fill it another fourth of the way with water. Grab a big stick. Stir that crap up. Caution, you will vomit. 5. Let's sit. 6. Take to house of person you hate. Lean the Todd up against the door. Ring the doorbell. Run like heck. Victim opens door. Todd falls in the house. Todd spills everywhere, unleashing its fury into the home of your enemy. Victim has to evacuate and have house fumigated for weeks. Glitter based things are the best. I propose glitter in all of their car air vents. If you can, when the car is parked pour all the glitter in, point the vent toward the driver side, then turn all the dials to maximum, so when they start the car, foomph. That would most likely cause severe eye scratching, glitter at that speed would be quite dangerous. Cut the labels from tuna cans and place them on cat dog food cans. The cans are the same size. Send them snippets of cobwebs and hair. Burnt bugs are creepy also. I read this in a post about pranks once, the guy said to get white paint and shrimp, and to mash the shrimp until the shrimp is not too visible, then you paint the victim's room and after a while, the most rank, low tide smell will pervade the deepest crevice of your mind for the rest of your life. I was on a bus once, I overheard a conversation where they were talking about how they hid a fish down the side of a sofa as retaliation for something. Fish down sofa. Unscrew the face pleats on a couple of outlets in obscure places. Ones behind the couch or dresses are great. In the little box in there. Put something that smells now. Or something that smells later. Seafood meets both of these requirements if you are interested. 
replace the faceplate. When your victim cleans their cat's litter box, everyone has a cat, right? Sneak into their house at the end of every day and steal the cat's daily deposit. Do this for about a month causing them to think their cat may be constipated. Finally, take a dump in the litter box. Eat lots of fiber and Taco Bell. You can take one of the round 50 gallon trash cans and lean it up on someone's front door. Get a water hose and fill it up. Ring the doorbell and run. Sign them up for as many free ringtone sites as possible using their number. Pretty much phone stees. Or, I'm not sure how, but switch off their internet whenever you like. Preferably when they're using it. When I was a younger gay, I became embroiled in a drag queen turf war. A lot of people died that year. One queen in particular had had it out for me. And every Thursday night she would end her set by walking onto my table. And then kicking over my drink. Every Thursday. That is until the night I unscrewed the tabletop and that be dang near broke her neck. Like I said, people died that year. Friend of mine. Brilliant. Kind of twisted. Guy. He had this idea for ruining someone's life. He called it the roach bomb and it was more or less what the title suggests. You start with a shoebox, duct tape, couple common cockroaches from around your house, and a big butt spoonful of peanut butter. You put the roaches, 4-5 would probably be ideal, in the box with the peanut butter and wrap it tight with duct tape. You don't want them escaping. Find a nice, warm, secure spot for the box, it'll be living there a while, every week or so. Pick up the box and give it a shake. You should theoretically feel more and more roaches in the box as time passes due to them feeding and reproducing. Ultimately, you want this thing to mature until there is hardly any free space left, but a half full box will still get the point across. When it's ready, take off the tape and put it in some nice wrapping paper. Mail it to the poor bastard who is about to have his life ruined. Ideally, this guy will be standing when he opens the bomb and, in his shock at discovering the box is brimming with live roaches, he drops it. Boom, they erupt from the box and scatter. This guy's house is fricked. His clothes and furniture are ruined, completely infested and he is sad. The roach bomb. Was there anybody in your class at school who you hated and got revenge on? Copied it from a post of mine a couple years ago. At my high school kids loved to embarrass kids taking shoots so they would kick open the store door and laugh at them. My junior year some kids a year below me did it to some nerdy kid thinking he would not do anything back. Until he came into the lunch room with his crap on a paper towel and slapped the kid who kicked the door open in the face with it. That was pretty much the end of that joke. This is easily the best thing in this tread was on a school music tour and this kid who bullied me in class decided to throw stuff at me on the coach. I kept all the stuff and waited for him to get off the bus and threw it back at him. Bearing in mind I had avoided confrontation for two years, I finally cracked. He punched me in the arm. I punched him in the chest hard as I could and I saw tears well up in his eyes as he staggered off. But that's not the end. None of the teachers saw this fight so it continued. Myself and three friends were in our room before dinner and this kid and his mates decide to raid our room. They nick a few packets of candy etc. and run out. Myself and friends barricaded the door and then went out via the balcony and got a teacher. The bully and his mates were caught trying to bash our door down. Their rooms got searched for our stuff and the teachers found booze. They were 15. So illegal, various drugs and a blown up toilet, as in destroyed. Their room was wrecked and it was about 5,000 pounds, 7,500 dollars of damage. The bully and his friends were suspended and had to pay for the damage and banned from future school trips. But there's still more. We were in Malta so they couldn't really be sent home. On the last day we went to the beach. Myself, my roommates and a few older students hired out some pedal boats and went out on the ocean. The bully and his mates decided to follow us. We were just chilling in the sun when the bully's boat comes over. They stop a few meters away and swim onto ours. Full blown fight kicks off. My teacher had hired a jet ski kinda thing and comes racing over. Just as I'm pushing the bully off the boat the teacher stops and sends waves flying. The bully slips and hits his jaw on the boat, wasn't broken though. Him and his mates swim off and leave us alone. Get back to school the next day and they're in deep crap. Banned from 6th form, 11th and 12th grade, and in isolation for 2 weeks after their suspension and paying the damages. It was glorious.
That's awesome. During 5th grade, a kid harassed me mainly about my weight. I usually ignored him. While we were walking up a hill to our art class, he noticed I was on my crappy phone. He took it from me and found a picture of my sister. He started saying how much he'd love to frick her. I shoved him down and grabbed my phone then continued walking up the hill without a word. A lot of the time when he physically attacked me, I would silently push him away and a teacher would get intervened. Well, this time there wasn't a teacher. Pushing him down Max P the skid off. He ran at me and I turn around, stuck my foot in the air, and pushed him backwards. By now my friends had stopped walking and were laughing their asses off while I calmly stared at this kid who had caused silent tears to be shed for a year. He stood up, reached in his pocket, and pulled out a knife. I couldn't run faster than him. I knew that. So I'd have to seriously fight this guy now. Something about realizing this and thinking of how much of a douche he was and how he had really hurt my feelings for the past year pee me off enough to literally tackle him and start punching the crap out of him. I just went to town, pulverizing his face. I stood up and realized I was bleeding. The sucker stabbed me with the knife, but only like the very tip. It felt numb with pain and even though it was small my friends started flipping out. They ran up the hill and got a teacher while my bully rolled around in pain and I stood clutching my stab wound that was really just a cut. After we were both in the principal's office, the principal saw I was stabbed and figured I was acting out of self defense. Logan got a few months in juvie while the girls fawned over big tough me. It was great. Hi freaking five man, you took on a guy with a knife. That takes some balls. When I was a freshman there was a sophomore who would bully me in our pay class. Toward the end of the year the class was in the locker room changing. While I had my shirt over my face this guy slapped my face. I finally lost it. I immediately chased after him and shoved him. This caused him to lose his balance and fall face first into a row of lockers. The kind with padlocks exposed. I felt vindicated for finally standing up for myself. But the best part was hearing all the other kids in the class ridicule him for being punked by a freshman. Nothing great. 6th grade I wasn't the most beautiful girl so I was picked on because I was overweight. All the time the popular girls would pick on me. So one day I noticed the most popular girl in class had a tissue sticking out of her bra. She started picking on me and I instantly came back with I'm going to go cry about it. Can I borrow a tissue from your bra? In front of our whole class during indoor recess. Instant tears. Never seen that girl cry before. It was the best moment of my 6th grade year. Stupid comeback but it was a hitter. Never felt like such. The best part of this story is how the last sentence just dissolves into nonsense. It makes it extra funny somehow. The kids in my neighborhood were always pretty brutal towards me. I had a long stretch of awkward years and one day early in high school I got caught up after the final bell of the day and was rushing to make my bus home. I was running in a full sprint and saw the bus pulling away. I ran after it, only to see the ringleader of my neighborhood miscreants flipping me off and throwing papers at me from the back window of the bus and the rest of the neighborhood kids laughing at me. They never stopped the bus for me. That same kid has since had several DUIs and a laundry list of misdemeanors and now works at one of the area's only full service gas stations. The feeling I get when I go out of my way in my shiny Audi to that gas station just a special request him to pump my gas is the best revenge I'll ever have. I just fist pumped in real life. You bet. A couple years ago, I'm in my early 30s. The guy my cousin just married asked me if I knew his co-worker, who was a couple years ahead of me at my high school. I sure did. He was a monster and tormented me daily throughout elementary school. I didn't see him after elementary school for a few years, and when I was a freshman in high school I had vague thoughts of kicking the crap out of him until I discovered, sad to say, he was huge and jacked. Not happening. Fun fact. One thing he did, when he was in 6th grade, was TP, spray paint, and break windows in the house of the one African American family who had moved to the neighborhood. This was in the northeast in the early 90s. Real winner here. Anyway, I told my cousin-in-law that I did know him, but didn't have much to say, and I stopped talking. I didn't want to start badmouthing someone my cousin-in-law might like, especially since this was a new family member I'd be seeing the rest of my life. 
So I didn't say anything, and that was the end of the story, or so I thought. Fast forward another year or two, and I'm having drinks with a cousin and her husband. He says, oh, by the way, you really hated, didn't you? I said, why yes, I sure did. He said he could tell because, even having only met me a year or so before that, he knew I was positive and effusive enough in general that if the only thing I can say about someone is that I know them, and I won't say anything positive or interesting, that's a bad, bad sign. He was right. Not that I had realized it at the time. Anyway, as it turns out, the cousin-in-law was not just this guy's co-worker, but his boss, and had been doing a pretty crummy job. The cousin-in-law was wondering if he should keep on the staff, and he was wondering if I'd have something good to say about him. When I absolutely did not, he let him go. I can't say I did cartwheels of joy, but I have to admit I'm not sorry it happened. People always told me that the bullies would get theirs eventually, and it's only occasionally true. So knowing that I played a small part in getting back at this guy is really fulfilling. TL. DR. Without knowing it, I was giving a thumbs up or thumbs down on whether my childhood tormentor should get fired. I gave him the thumbs down and still came out looking like the nice guy. I like how this works out just by you being really upright and true to yourself. No violence or anything. Good one. Got a lot of fat jokes from this one kid throughout 7 of my years in school. Got them all the time from most people but there was real hate and venom behind this one kid's insults. During a biology practical I hid a cow's eye in his sandwich and kept half an eye on him during the lunch hour. Judging by his reaction, he got a good bite of it before realizing. After that people were drawing eyes on his books, notes, making jokes about it. He never heard the end of it. I know this makes me lower than him but I have no regrets. Got a lot of fat jokes. I had a cow's eye in his sandwich. Taking your eye out and putting it in his sandwich seems a bit extreme. There was this girl in high school that was you quintessential popular bee that everyone really hated. She was probably the meanest person I've ever seen up close. 10 years later she works at Denny's. I go in as often as possible to drum up casual conversation about my life and then over tip as much as possible. This butthole kid in my school when I was young bullied me since 7th grade. Just the regular stuff you'd expect from teenage doucher bags. Gay bashing. Calling me a f and so on. I'm truly convinced he's in the closet and secretly obsessed with me because he just goes out of his way to be a dong. Quote. I think all gay people should be put on their own island away from everyone else. Anyway. Once upon a time in math class when the teacher wasn't paying attention. He'd throw dimes and nickels at me from across the classroom, and usually miss because he has crappy aim. I'm not the confrontational type at all, and have barely spoken in the class, but this pee me off to no end. On a particular day, one of these dimes hit me in the back of the head. The entire class was quiet, and I just blew up. I turned around and said at the top of my lungs, in front of the teacher and all, if you throw another freaking coin at me I'm going to get up and punch you in the freaking face. Got no response, and everyone in the room was staring at me, so I continued, you're tough enough to throw it when I'm not looking, but won't admit it when I call you out. P I don't know what came over me, but the best part, the teacher stared for a moment before commenting, well said, and resumed teaching. He hasn't done anything to me since. Moral of the story, stand up for yourself if anyone ever picks on you. Bullies thrive on silence and their biggest fear is being called out and I regret not doing it sooner. My male classmate was always a dong, a practical joker, but he picked on me the most. He threw spitballs from the back of the class to me, I sat at the front, put twisted stapler bullets on my chair at every opportunity, called me names, sometimes pushed me around and usually got me humiliated in my class. So one day during class he was doing his usual, spitballs. It was a good day for him, because it landed on my hair. From that moment, something within me snapped and I got up calmly from my chair, with a mechanical pencil in my hand. I stabbed him squarely at the back of his hand. He looked mortified but he took it like a champ. The lead of the pencil broke and stuck to his skin. I must have stabbed pretty deep. There was some droplets of blood from the wound. Before he could do anything the teacher came in and started class, so he couldn't excuse himself. When class ended, I saw him bolt towards the bathroom. My friend leaned over and whispered to me, 
You know that he likes you, right? I just sat there feeling half guilty and half victorious. Welp. He didn't disturb me much after that. Oh. And this was when we were 15. Oh no. TL. DR. Felt like Arnold and Helga from Hey Arnold. But with a little blood. My only tattoo is a piece of pencil lead stuck in my arm. He probably still sees it and thinks about you. You'll be with him. Forever. Yeah. Back in kindergarten. This punk kid would tease me for having a weird name. So one day during nap time I was sitting at my desk, head down, when I saw the kid heading out to the bathroom. When I heard him returning, I casually stuck out my leg. He tripped, face planted, got up, lost a tooth and started crying. I smiled and went back to my nap. That's pretty thug. For kindergarten. During my junior year, there was this b-wheel call M in my gym class. She would single out a few people to torture with her minions, and I was one of the lucky few. She would shoot dirty looks, call people names, single them out in games like dodgeball, all that kind of stuff. One day, she decided to tell her super senior douchebag friend to single me out in floor hockey, and he, purposely, hacked sticks with me and smashed my wrist. It ended up only being sprained, but I was pee nonetheless. A few weeks go by and we start playing dodgeball. I was going one on three with some senior boys and then they hit me, so I started walking off the court. Then this BM starts yelling at me get off the freaking court, you're out B and all that stuff. And I was like yeah I'm fully aware of that, if you weren't such a dumbass you would notice that's exactly what I'm doing. And then she proceeds to call me a B and stuff, and I know that was a bitchy comment. But all my rage throughout the year was pent up and I was about to release it. I walked over to her and said okay what the heck is your problem? I've done nothing to you so I really don't understand why you're acting like this towards me. Then she just starts laughing with her little bee friends. And I start walking away. She then says yeah, you better walk away. Rage ensues. I did a 180 and punched her square in the temple, knocking her to the ground. This is the first time I have ever gotten into a physical altercation with anyone, and I'm not an easily angered person. So of course, everyone was surprised, and the teacher didn't even notice until her friend was like Naz just punched him in the face. What the frick they got a security guard to take me to the discipline office, and he was like okay we're gonna go to the nurse first, and I was like um, why? I punched her. He was all surprised that I didn't hurt my hand or anything and that I actually knew how to throw a punch, and gave me a high five. Throughout the next few days, I had people I barely talked to coming up to me and giving me hugs and high fives, telling me how they've wanted to punch her in the face for so long and were glad someone actually did it. TL. DR. Punched a bee in the face. Became school hero. Got bullied in secondary school. Eventually I had enough and pushed him down a flight of stairs and then walked into class like nothing happened. I was picked on continuously by I guess what most would call a bully. Ten years later he apologized for being such a douche and I accepted the apology and moved on with my life. I sure showed him. When I was in 4th grade this annoying 3rd grader kept messing with me. He would run up behind me and try to knock me down all the time. Especially since he was just a 3rd grader that was trying to bully me. It pee me off. And I decided to end it before it got out of control. I saw him standing there doing nothing like an butthole one day at recess and remember how much he had been bothering me. I started running as fast as I could straight at him from across the playground and knocked him flat on his back. He got up and tackled me, and we rolled around on the ground wrestling for a little while before one of the recess monitors saw us. I got in trouble and had to write I will not fight or something like that 25 times during one recess. He never bothered me again after that, though. Comma standing there doing nothing like an butthole one day at recess. WTF. I guess I spent a few recesses being an butthole myself. There was another boy who was continuously picking on me. Then one day we were all playing basketball and he started again. I was so pee that when he turned around I kicked his butt. Literally. So hard that he went up in the air and then landed on the ground. Even my foot hurt quite a bit. So hard did I kick him. He stood up. Then went 5100 meters away while clearly being in pain and with tears in his eyes and then came back after 15 minutes and played further like nothing happened. Never bugged me again after that. 
I had a bully in middle school who bothered me since I was a 4th grader. He was one of many, but none of them ever had the balls to pull something physical. The last week of my final year at that middle school, he decides to pull some crap and starts talking to me in an attempt to get a rise out of me. In any case it worked, I was fed up with everyone's crap. That on top of being forced to attend graduation from a school I despised with a fiery passion caused me to drop all sense of civility and composure. It just so happened he had his mouth wide open when I spit at his face. I don't know where I got him, but I hope it was in the mouth. I figured this might actually get him to throw a punch so I'd have an excuse to go freaking crazy and bite his ear off or something. After letting one rip, he sat there dumbfounded for a little while. He then walked away and came back 5 minutes later threatening to kick my butt. He never did anything. I never really understood believe the saying success is the best revenge until recently. I was extremely skinny and weak in school, and got a lot of crap from bullies. It was not a good time in my life at all. I did okay through school but somehow ended up with a decent office job making good money. I'm proud of what I've become, but I don't really see myself as any more special than anyone else. One day I was on my lunch break from work and stopped at a gas station to grab a snack and a drink. I got my stuff and walked up to the register. Behind it was Chris, let's call him. Chris liked to throw me against the lockers at school, throw stuff at me in the hallways, and just mess with me, despite my never really knowing him all that well. He was just overall a bad person, and from things I heard after I left the school, he continued being a waste of space. So here was Chris. I was 21 when I ran into him. He had to be around 23 or so. He worked at a gas station, and from what I had heard through the grapevine was still doing a ton of drugs and whatnot. The next part of the story could go with me saying remember me, shithead but it doesn't. I didn't say anything. I'm not a bully. He didn't recognize me from the look of things, so I just let him live his life. I just kept that victory in the back of my head, that occasionally the universe does things right, and bad people don't amount to much. In middle school, I was the shortest kid in class. Today, I'm 6 feet 3, and was the easy target for bullying. One guy in particular stood out as particularly dickish, let's call him Philip. Philip happened to live in the same neighborhood as me, about 10 houses down the street. The thing to keep in mind here is that in elementary school, he and I used to be friends, but we fell into different crowds as we grew up. Despite our growing animosity, our parents were still friends and neighborly, oblivious to the fact that young Philip enjoyed borrowing my lunch money and play fighting after school. He was suspended twice for bullying crap and started to develop psychopathic tendencies coming very close to expulsion at one point. Philip's parents ended up divorcing in high school, and took split custody of the three kids. Philip moved to Texas with his dad, his mother and two daughters stayed in Florida. You can kind of see where this is going. I dated his younger sister in senior year of high school. We never had sex, mind you, just dated for a month or so. But what's important is what happened in that month. Philip's parents were talking about reconciling for the benefit of the kids. On Thanksgiving, Philip and his dad came home for what was supposed to be the trial run for reconciliation. Everyone was to be on their best behavior, all smiles, etc etc. I was invited to the dinner, and Philip had no clue I would be there. When he walked in and saw me, he instantly turned red and was visibly filled with rage. He went into a frenzy right there, demanding I leave his house. He came up to me and shoved me. When his sister informed him we were dating, he lost it. He punched me in the jaw and started screaming he was going to kill me. He grabbed a carving knife from the table and it was evident he intended to stab me. Everything was stopped by two words. Get out. His mom said that in an icy cold whisper that still chills me. Silence. In a seething voice. She told Philip and his father that they were to never set foot in her house again. And then she looked at Philip and said, You are the reason why our lives are crap. You are the reason why our marriage has been ruined. And you are the reason why I will never let you back into my life. No words were said after that. They left. And I never saw Philip again. TL. DR. Indirectly cost my bully his parents marriage. Well that got dark pretty quickly. One day in second grade. A girl stole the prize I got for winning a game of math bingo. She just went into my backpack and stole it. I told my teacher about it and she made a whole classroom search. 
It was in her backpack. As it turns out, there was tons of stolen loot in there. She later transferred schools. In high school, this girl wiped her feet against the back of my jacket. Being an awkwardly shy kid, I cried silently inside and watched on as her friends laughed. About 5 minutes later, she tripped walking down the bleachers and fell on her face. If ever there is such a thing called cosmic revenge, that was it. Back in 8th grade, there was a kid who thought he was the toughest gangster to ever live. He was a tiny guy, about 5 feet tall. He would always talk about how he beat some other kids up, and how awesome his gang banging brother was. I have no idea why, kind of a stupid thing to brag about. Anyway, one day we were in the gym playing soccer and he kept calling me a P to try himself look tough. At the time I was about 6 feet tall, I got so fed up with his crap that I picked him up by his neck, and walked about 5 feet to the soccer goal and threw him into it, and the teacher never looked up from his laptop. He never said crap to me again. I'm 5th grade this kid would always pick on me. Let's just call him Jason. Every day during PE he would always make fun of me and call me a weakling. I was fairly small and knew myself that I was not very strong and was usually always picked last during dodgeball, basketball etc etc. Well one day after months of him just always making fun of me. He was in front of me making fun like he normally does and I just decided to kick him as hard as I could in the balls in the boys locker room. He started screaming and crying and I told him to never mess with me again. And he never did after that. After that incident though I got more crap from a lot of people because hitting a kid in the balls is really cheap I guess it was. But he should have never fricked with me to begin with. Wherever you are Jason. Thanks for making my life a living heck for 2 years during middle school and I hope from that point forward you never picked on anyone else. Frick you. That's my purse. I don't know you. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.